Most people who watch this orchestration course speak and read English, so they'll be using orchestration textbooks like Adler, Piston, or the Cambridge Guide to Orchestration. All these are excellent, but there's another orchestration treatise that is completely at a different level. Although it's in French, anyone who's really serious about orchestration should at least know about this. Here I'm going to give a guided tour of this incredible resource. Köchlein, Traité de l'Orchestration. As you can see, it's four large volumes. It's about 1,500 pages in all. The English language books I mentioned talk mainly about instrument ranges and technique, and then add a bit of other material afterwards. Here's the table of contents of just book one of the Köchlein. This starts with the instruments, like the other texts. But then, orchestral balance. About 100 pages, this chapter. This talks about all kinds of things I've seen almost never mentioned in any depth in any other book. Volume and intensity. Volume means the fatness of a sound. Like if you have a French horn and a violin playing middle C, even if they're both playing very quietly, the French horn will always sound rounder and fatter than the violin. Then balance of sounds together when things are happening at the same time. Then balance successively. But what happens when you have a full orchestra followed by an oboe solo? Then, discussion of unequal planes of tone. Then, what drowns out other planes? What allows other planes to come through? What stands out? These are very important aspects of orchestration. If we look at just one page from this chapter, it mentions unequal planes of tone, gradation of sonorities, scales of volume and intensity, and triple piano and triple forte. Each one of these subjects is covered in detail, with lots of repertoire examples. Okay, here's the table of contents of Book 2. First, we'll look at the string section. In French, this is called the Quatuor, but actually includes the double bass and the orchestra. This is not about the individual instrument's techniques anymore, but about their possible roles within the orchestra. Kirchlein discusses different ways of handling melodic lines, different kinds of texture in one, two, three parts, and so on, use of different registers, Pizzicato, divisi, double stops, and mutes. When and how to use solo strings in the orchestra. Then, in the same vein, voices, choirs, percussion and keyboard, brass, and woodwind. In each case, he talks not just about the individual instruments, but also how they can be combined. There are examples here from Fauré, Bizet, and his own music, and then, below, a section about using oboe and clarinet in unison. Just one of many, discussing various combinations. And this is not just a list of all these innumerable combinations, but all have examples discussed in detail. Later on, he discusses larger combinations, for example, using seven kinds of instruments at once. When we get to the end of the second volume, after around 750 pages, we get to volume three, and this is called Orchestration Proprement Dit. That means now we're getting down to the real subject of orchestration. The rest was just an introduction. Here's the table of contents. So here we're talking about musical textures, a general discussion of sonority, various kinds of textures, for example, with and without doubling, how to orchestrate melody, unison, octaves, and so on in various string sections. Then, contrapuntal textures in two and three parts, dialogues, crescendos and diminuendos, woodwind and brass, and then various kinds of accompaniment, percussion, harp, organ, piano, and the orchestra, and orchestration of concerti. And as before, there are lots of examples. The second example on this page here is from Debussy, Perias et Melisande. Accompanying the voice, we have the main line in, vi in violin two and viola, a counterpoint in violin one, and sustained woodwinds, including horn. And now, finally, volume four. This volume is about special situations. Vocal soloists, various kinds of accompaniment for vocal soloists. Ensembles of vocal soloists and how to accompany them. The orchestra accompany a choir, various possibilities and in great detail. Then he goes on to discuss orchestrating piano music, organ music, chamber music, various ways of orchestrating the same passage, orchestrating polytonality and atonality, and microtonal orchestration. Then, in chapter 5, various instrumental formations, chamber music, small ensembles, unusual ensembles, large orchestras, various ways to orchestrate one chord, according to the kind of example. Finally, the last chapter deals with timbral characteristics of the various families and combinations and more complex orchestral characters. As we can see from this quick overview, Kirschland goes into enormous detail about subjects that the other books don't even mention. 
It is an invaluable resource and nobody who's interested in orchestration should be without it.